happy day to all topic for today is vertical root fractures contents introduction definition classification etiology diagnosis clinical signs and symptoms radiographic signs diagnostic tests differential diagnosis treatment alternatives prognosis prevention conclusion and references tooth fracture has been described as a major problem in dentistry and is the third most common cause of tooth loss after dental caries and periodontal disease vertical root fracture presents 2 to 5% of crown root fractures vertical root fracture commonly occurs in endodontically treated teeth around 11 to 20% in molar teeth the fracture is most commonly buccolingual in orientation in individual roots Definition According to Pitts and Natkin, a vertical root fracture is a longitudinally oriented fracture of the root extending throughout the entire thickness of dentin from the root canal to the periodontium. It may be initiated in the crown or at the root apex or in some cases along the root between these two points. Classification of Crack Tooth Syndrome by Williams Class 1 Incomplete vertical fracture, that is, fracture through enamel into dentin but not into pulp. Class 2 Pulpal involvement, that is, incomplete crown fracture involving the pulp. Class 3 Attachment involvement, incomplete vertical fracture involving the attachment apparatus. Class 4 Complete separation of tooth fragments. Here, fracture divides the tooth. Class 5, retrograde root fracture, that is apically induced fracture. Etiology Trauma is the most likely cause of vertical root fractures in vital teeth, typically occurring from physical trauma, clenching or bruxism, or occurring in teeth undergoing apexification. In case of non-vital teeth, Root fractures mainly are iatrogenic, resulting from dental treatment excess. For example, excessive canal shaping, excessive pressure during compaction of cut aperture, excessive width and length of a pore space in relation to tooth's anatomy and morphology, or excessive pressure during placement of the double. Diagnosis to ascertain a diagnosis of vertical root fracture, the clinician should undertake the following steps. Identify susceptible teeth and roots for fractures. Take a complete history of the susceptible tooth. Clinically examine for pain on mastication and prolonged discomfort. Use a periodontal probe to detect an osseous defect, especially at the buccal aspect of suspected root. Take at least two angulations with periapical radiographs to detect either a fracture line or typical periradicular radiolucency. Elevate an exploratory flap that usually helps to visualize the pattern of bone loss and fracture. Clinical symptoms. The pain is usually mild to moderate in intensity. Rarely severe pain is associated with these teeth. History of pain and biting, especially with release of biting pressure and the patient tends to have trouble explaining this complaint. Sometimes there is pain to temperature extremes, especially cold. Initially, there is no pain to percussion and radiographs are inconclusive. Often, patients will complain of a long history of pain which has been difficult to diagnose and of treatment which has failed to relieve their symptoms. These have been labeled as classic signs of cracks. Clinical signs, swelling. The swelling is usually broad based and mid root in position. Palpation will often show swelling and tenderness over the root itself, but little swelling in the periapical region. Sinus tracts. When a sinus tract is present, it may be situated in or close to attached gingiva rather than in the apical region. Double or multiple sinus tracts are also common. Deep narrow pocket. A common feature of vertically root fractured teeth is the development of deep, narrow, isolated periodontal pockets. 
deep probing in one position around the circumference of the tooth in the presence of otherwise normal attachment usually indicates that the tooth is fractured. Deep probing in two positions on opposite sides of the infection is almost pathognomic for the presence of a fracture. Dislodgement of a post or post crown. A root fracture should be suspected if an apparently well-fitting post or post core becomes dislodged. Fail surgery. Because of problems with diagnosis, it is not uncommon for the teeth with vertical root fractures to have been treated repeatedly by surgery before the presence of a fracture is suspected. When surgery fails for no obvious reasons, a vertical root fracture should be considered a possibility before the peripheral area is re-entered surgically. While the clinical presentation of a vertical root fracture can be variable, radiographic signs are at times quite specific. These signs can vary considerably from case to case depending on the angle of the X-ray beam in relation to the plane of fracture. Unless the X-ray beam is parallel to the fracture line, the root fracture will not be revealed. Various radiographic signs are fracture lines along the root or root filling, space beside root filling or post, double images, radio-opaque signs, widening of periodontal ligament space, radiolucent halos, V-shaped diffuse bone loss on roots, isolated horizontal bone loss in molars, unexplained bifurcation bone loss, step-like bone defects, resorption along fracture line, dislodgement of retrograde filling material, endodontic failures after healing has occurred. Fracture lines along the root or root filling. On occasions, direct evidence of a fracture can be seen as a vertical radiolucent line running across the root or the root filling. Space beside a root filling. Minor separation of fragments can result in radiographic appearance of a vertical space adjacent to a root filling that is otherwise well obturated. Space beside a post. When a post is present in a vertically root fractured tooth, Slight separation of the fractured fragments can result in the appearance of a space between the edge of the root canal which may be coated with cement and the post itself. Radio opaque signs Cement trial Where separation of fracture occurs during root filling, extension of root filling material through the apex can result in a tangle of axillary points at the apex called as apical spaghetti. Double images. When separation of fragment occurs in a direction other than parallel to the X-ray beam, overlapping of fragments may result in double images of the external root surface. Widening of periodontal ligament space around the whole length of the root is an indication that the tooth is vertically fractured. Radiolucent halos. Halo-like radiolucency is a combination of periapical and perilateral radiolucency running around the whole of the tooth. While the width of diffuse bone loss may vary, a radiolucent halo which runs around the whole of the root surface, it's a J-type lesion, is a classic sign of a vertical root fracture. Step-like bone defects. When the fracture runs obliquely across the root or where the fracture does not extend into the apical portion, a characteristic step-like bone defect develops. Isolated horizontal bone loss. When only an isolated tooth shows bilateral horizontal bone loss, the presence of a mesial distal root fracture should be expected. Particularly in the presence of apparently successful endodontic therapy and where the overall periodontal situation is stable. V-shaped diffuse bone loss on roots of posterior teeth. When the buccal roots of maxillary or mandibular molars are vertically fractured, the characteristic radiographic image of bone loss is a diffuse V-shaped radiolucency, widest at the crustal bone, narrowing towards the apex. If a crack is suspected, proper medical and dental history and several diagnostic steps should be taken to confirm the suspicion. Medical history a history of facial trauma may add information to help in the creation of a differential diagnosis. For example, patient with seizure disorders may be prone to dental trauma, 
either from severe seizure induced clenching or from physical injuries sustained secondary to a grand mal seizure. Additionally, a patient who had a stroke, heart attack or either any other ailment that might have resulted in lack of consciousness could have traumatized a tooth. This could result in a vertical root fracture if the trauma is directed accordingly. Dental history. Check for a history of repeated occlusal adjustments with only temporary relief of symptoms or evaluation by several practitioners without a conclusive diagnosis. Also, check for history of periodontal disease with extensive bone loss in an area. Additionally, check for history of other cracked teeth because many of the anatomical and behavioral factors that predispose teeth to cracks often affect more than one tooth. Subjective examination. Ask if the patient remembers accidentally biting a hard object. Such an incident may correspond to a sudden onset of pain. Also, ask about damaging habits such as clenching or grinding the teeth or chewing an ice, pens, hard candy or other hard objects. Visual examination. Start with the face, checking for enlarged jaw muscles which may indicate a habit of overstressing the teeth during mastication. Then check for wear facets which may indicate a history of clenching, bruxism or biting and chewing with excessive force. Next, check the teeth for tight cusp fossae relationships that may cause excessive occlusal stresses. Note any steep cusps or developmental growths because these may predispose teeth to cracks. Finally, check two surfaces carefully in a dry field. Note any craze lines or darker cracks. Dental operating microscope has become an invaluable tool when doing endodontic treatment. With greater magnification capabilities and superb illumination, the clinician is now capable of observing intracoronal and extracoronal details with great precision. Tactile examination. Scratch the surface of the tooth with the tip of a sharp explorer. The tip may catch in a crack. Palpate the gingiva around the tooth, checking for possible evidence of an underlying dehiscence or fenestration typical of a vertical root fracture. Vitality testing can be helpful in diagnosing a vertical root fracture. A non-vital tooth that is intact or has minimal restoration is highly suggestive of vertical root fracture. Bite test. Use a rubber wheel, cotton wood stick or tooth sloth to focus biting pressures on specific cusps to reproduce the patient's complaint. Pain during biting or chewing is considered a classic symptom and may be the only conclusive evidence early in the crack's development. Periodontal probing. Thorough probing in small increments around the entire circumference of the tooth may reveal a narrow periodontal pocket which can be easily differentiated from the broad base defect characteristic of a periodontal disease pocket. Dye or staining test. Cracks or vertical fracture may be disclosed through staining. A dye such as methylene blue can be applied to the external tooth surface with a cotton tip applicator in the cavity after restriction removal or a surgically exposed root moments before the bite test. Immediately after the bite test, the excess dye may be removed with a moist application of 70% isopropyl alcohol. The stain will penetrate the crack and be apparent. In transillumination test, a fiber optic light source is positioned perpendicular to the plane of the suspected crack. A fracture will block the light. The part of the tooth that is proximal to the light source will absorb this light and glow, whereas the area beyond this fracture will not have light transmitted to it and will be grey by comparison. Computed tomography is a valuable method for three-dimensional, non-destructive visualization and exploration of vertical root fractures or cracks. This technique has been shown to be superior to dental radiography in detection of vertical root fractures. Differential diagnosis, palato-radicular groove, enamel projections, cemental tear, acute alveolar abscess, axillary canals. 
Treatment alternatives of vertically fractured teeth is difficult and is dependent on the tooth type as well as on the extent, duration and location of the fracture. The main aim is to eliminate the fracture or the leakage of bacteria along the fracture plane. Multi-rooted teeth can often be successfully treated by resecting the root either by root amputation or hemisection. In general, prognosis for single rooted teeth is poor and extraction is often the treatment of choice. Numerous case reports are described in the literature where innovative attempts to treat and retain vertically fractured teeth have been attempted with varying success. These include bonding using cyanoacrylate, glycinoma cements and composite resins, bonding using wires, bonding using adhesive resin cements and replantation, fusing the fragments using carbon dioxide and NDYAG laser, hemisection and root amputation, extraction. Prognosis If a coronal crack is observed with non movable segments and the patient does not have symptoms, the tooth has got good prognosis. If the tooth is sensitive upon probing the occlusal crack with the opposing segments non movable then the prognosis is more guarded. If there are movable segments on either side of the crack, then the prognosis is poor. Prevention Because the causes of vertical root fractures are well known, prevention should not be difficult. The safety rules are Avoid excessive removal of interradicular dentin. Treatment and restorative procedures that require minimal dentin preparation should be selected. Minimize internal wedging forces. Condensation of obturating materials should be carefully controlled. Pores should be as small as possible and have a passive fit. Cementation should be done carefully and slowly. An escape vent for the cement is probably helpful. Conclusion Even though vertical root fractures represent only a small portion that is 2-5% of crown root fractures, their diagnosis is a frustrating phenomenon for both the clinician and the patient. The vertical root fractures can be detected early by listening to the patient's chief complaints, carefully examining the radiographs and performing a thorough clinical examination. These are the references. Thank you.